Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome to another video in our beginner series on front-end Ethereum development. In the last video, we took you through a super simple example of how to connect to a user's wallet using the Ethereum API that's injected into our browsers from wallets like MetaMask. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it a step further and show you how to check the, that said wallet's account balance. So here I am on Stack Starter. I'm gonna go ahead and just click Build, and let's dive right in. So where we left off was we were able to basically expose a little button here that says Connect Wallet. And when you click this button, it's going to call this function called Enable ETH. And the Enable ETH function is basically going to call out to this ETH Request Accounts RPC call, which is exposed through the window.ethereum object, which MetaMask injects into the browser for us. Okay, now once we have that object, we can now start to interact with the Ethereum API, or what we call the JSON RPC API, a remote procedure call API. So using that API, we're, we're able to now use different methods within that API to interact with Ethereum, which is super cool. Now, some of you may notice this is definitely not um, clean in terms of detecting whether or not the window that Ethereum is present and things like that. We're going to come back in another video and clean this up a little bit and do some detection and maybe do some like, you know, hide certain buttons if you're connected or not and stuff like that. But for now, I just want to illustrate how to make these calls um, to these specific RPC endpoints. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into doing a call to check a user's balance. So what I'm going to do here is, hopefully the it's big enough here, I'm zoomed in a bit. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define another function right below here. I'm going to call it const, and I'm going to say check ETH balance. And we'll make it an async function again, because we are going to be making calls into the, uh, into the RPC API, which is going to be asynchronous. So we'll go ahead and define our function like that. Now, let's go ahead and I'm just going to keep everything right within this function itself. So I'm going to say let balance equal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to basically follow the same pattern that we did up here by using this window.ethereum.request method call, but we're going to use a different method name. So we're going to say await window.ethereum dot request and we're going to pass to it a similar object here so the object is going to have a method property and the method name is not going to be eth request account it's going to be eth get balance and now how do i know what this is right so there's a couple of reference points here so metamask has a a, a pretty good set of documentation this actually goes over some of the stuff that we did in the first video um, but it also dives into some specific uh, different calls and some specific API calls that are specific to this Ethereum object, but also how it passes into this RPC API, which right here, here's some of the kind of core methods that are in this API, but we could dive over into the Ethereum wiki and we could see these are all of the JSON RPC methods that are available to us. There's a good amount to explore here. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do here. We're gonna get into it in, in, in future videos. Um, so if you're liking this content, please give, give us a sub subscribe and like, but um, there's a lot we could do here. But if we wanna just look at the ETH get balance, let's dive right to that. And that'll show us here that all we have to do is pass these parameters here. The parameter is basically the address and the latest, earliest, or pending. To be honest, I'm not really 100% sure what these are. You don't need to pass these. Um, and there is a default block parameter. I think latest is the default. So we're not gonna even pass these in there. So let's go back here and we're gonna say method get balance. And now we need to pass those parameters. As you saw here in the documentation, it is an array, right? Because it gets these little brackets right here, right? So Let's go ahead back here and let's now pass in that params array. So I'm going to do a comma here and I'm going to hit enter just to move this down a little bit and we'll close this off just so that we, uh, we're keeping everything clean. Now I'm going to say params and we'll open that up and this is going to be an array. So I'm going to give it a little, little blocks there and all I need to do here is being that we 
made the accounts a global variable and we, we defined it up here, we do have access to it within this function, right? So if I say just accounts, and that, if we recall, is an array. So I'm going to say account sub zero. And that should be all we need to call into the eth get balance. And now we'll go ahead and being that we're doing this async, we're going to say catch, because we want to catch any errors that may come out of this. We'll say catch error, and we'll go ahead and just pass this into a little function here. And I'll just go ahead and console.log any errors for now. All right, so this should be all we need in order to get the actual balance. Now at the end of this call, being that we, we are following this async and await pattern, we can be pretty confident that once we get here, we will have the balance. So let's just go ahead and output that to the console and let's see what it looks like. So I'll say console.log balance. And that should be good. Now, is anything going to call this? If I go ahead and run this application, all we have is this connect wallet. And I think I am not connected to it now. I'm not. So this is my test account here. We have about 99 ETH in here. And we, you can see here in MetaMask, it says we are not connected. So we do want to connect to the wallet. We can use that little function we wrote in the first video on how to actually do that. But before I do that, we do need to add another button here to check our balance, right? Because this is not going to be called just magically. We need to actually call this bad boy. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our HTML. And I'm just going to stack some buttons here. So we'll just say button, oh, not bitten, button on click. And we're going to say check, oh, what do we call the function? Check, check ETH balance. All right. And then we'll just say check my balance. All right, awesome. So now if we go back to here, we should have two buttons here, right? We're just kind of keeping it really simple right now. We're not kind of hiding things and showing things depending on the state. We'll probably do that in a, in a future video just to clean this up a little bit. That'll be a little bit more of CSS stuff um, and pure JavaScript stuff. So now if we click that, we should execute this check ETH balance. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up my console because that's really all we're outputting to. And I realized in the last video, I should probably zoom into this so you guys can see it. And I'm going to clear it. And most of the action is happening here. So I'm going to really zoom into this bad boy. Let's go ahead and click that. Boom. Boom. Cannot read prop. Ah, we forgot to connect. So we're not really doing much error detection here, right? So we don't have access to accounts. So accounts here is currently undefined, right? So if I go here and say connect wallet, we should see a, a prompt here. I'm going to connect it here and boom. Now we're connected and there we go. Now accounts is going to have an account in it and that's the account address of our account. So now we're connected to our wallet. Now if I click check my balance, boom, what the heck is that? So we did get a balance, but what, does anybody know what format that's in? That's kind of crazy. So this is in uh, hexadecimal format. So this is in hexadecimal format. In order to get this to look like a actual number that we would see in our wallet, so we're expecting to see 99.8744, right? Uh, but we're seeing this crazy number here. Now, in order to do this, uh, we have to do a little bit of conversion here. And in a future video, we're going to go into some of the utility libraries that exist, like Web3 and Ethers, that make it a little easier to work with this type of data. Uh, but it's pretty simple in JavaScript right now. There's just a couple things we need to do uh, and a couple things we need to understand in terms of what value this represents. So this does represent the amount of Ether we have, but in a unit of measure called way. Now, way is the least common um, it's the smallest unit of measure in Ethereum. And it basically, one way is one trillionth of an ETH, basically 10 to the 18th power. So there's, you know, there's, <laughs> one way is, is pretty small compared to one ETH. Um, it's basically one ETH is, you, know, you have to divide one ETH by 10 to the 18th power um, to get how many way it is. Um, so what we need to do here is first, I would, convert this to an integer. So what we could do is I could do this right on the console, right? So we could say, um, we'll say i is equal to parse int, 
And with parse int, which is part of this JavaScript, we can go ahead and just copy this, paste this in here. And you'll see now we have an integer. Now the integer is looking a little bit more like our balance, right? 99.8744, we've got 998744. I'm pointing to my screen like you can see me here. So now we have this integer value, but now in order to uh, get it to look like actually ether, we now need to divide this by 10 to the 18th power trillion. So I'll go ahead, I'll just put this into another variable. I'm gonna say t equals math.pow and we'll say 10 to the 18. Now that's going to give us this big number here. Now what we could say is the number e, or just the number e, is going to be t divided by, oh, I'm sorry, i divided by t. And there we go, 99.8744. Now we have our balance. Awesome. So a little bit of math there. Just to, uh, just to clarify exactly what is being returned from that RPC call, we are seeing that it is the value of ETH in way, it's in hex format, so we have to convert that. And we'll see in later videos, like I said, how to use utility functions to actually do that. So why don't we, before we wrap this video up, I'm trying to make these videos kind of just short and to the point, um, why don't we just go ahead and put this code into our script here. So now that we have the balance, let's go ahead and say, um, we'll, we'll write the balance as ETH. So we could say, um, first we want to make the balance to, I'll just overwrite it, I guess. So we'll say balance equals um, parse int balance, right? And then we'll say um, balance equals balance divided by math.pow. 10 to the 18th. All right, so just kind of like make it a little concise here. Now at the end of this, I'll take this console.log. Uh, at the end of this, we should see that our balance is in ETH. So we just, let's convert. We're gonna convert hex way to ETH. Now, we refresh this and we say check my balance. Did I not have to connect again? Do I not have the account? Oh, you know what? Yes. So that is a problem with the script. We'll have to clean that up because I don't have an on, we're not listening for events. So that may actually be the next video is to talk a little bit about events and, and what events the Ethereum object emits so that we can make sure that these accounts are filled out. In this case, I have to actually disconnect here and then reconnect the wallet in order to get access to those accounts. And there we go, boom, 99.8744. So we're able to read the user's balance. Pretty cool stuff. So there's a lot of content I wanna cover here. I'm going to try to release these videos at least weekly. Um, if you guys are finding this useful, please please give this a like, uh, give us a subscribe, and you know we're just trying to Learn together with you on how to develop with uh, Web3 applications. There's just so much exciting stuff to learn, and I just feel like I need to share this stuff. So, um, yeah, any questions, let me know. Throw it in the comments, and we can, uh, we can talk. Thanks.